Did you know that it's unusual to get a new mole after the age of 30? That means if you're over 30 and you've developed a new skin lesion, don't assume it's a mole. It needs to be checked out. It's likely to be a benign or an innocent thing, but it may represent a skin cancer. Today, I'm going to show you the most common skin lesion that I see. It's called seborrheic keratosis. These are innocent lesions. They're sometimes referred to as seborrheic warts, although they're not contagious like viral warts can be. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Finbar, and on this channel, I explore how we learn to love the skin we're in so that we can live healthier, happier, and more joyful lives. Seborrheic keratosis are benign, non-cancerous skin growths that typically affect adults. We tend to get more and more the older and older we get. Although they can appear anywhere on the body, they're most commonly found on the face, the neck, the chest, and on the back. Despite their often alarming appearance, which I'll show you very soon, seborrheic keratosis are harmless and don't pose any serious health risks. Seborrheic keratosis can be identified by their fairly distinct appearance. People tend to have more than one, and some people, like this gentleman here, can have quite a large number of them. They can vary in size from a few millimeters to several centimeters. And they can range in color from skin color to light brown to black. And some people have all of the above. And they can be mistaken then for a melanoma. The image I'm showing you includes photos of what I can see using my dermatoscope. I find my patients often like to see these photos and although many people find them unsightly, I personally think they're quite nice to see. Seborrheic keratosis appear to have a stuck on look to them. They have a well-defined edge around the whole peripheral and the surface can either be waxy, scaly or have a rough and dry texture. They may become itchy or irritated in some cases and this often is the reason why people present to have them checked. This lesion is a common type of seborrheic keratosis that I see. A patient will often tell me that their mole has become dark but actually false tan has become trapped in the grooves and you can see that on this otherwise skin coloured seborrheic keratosis. So false tan, although not harmful, can often highlight those seborrheic keratosis and also another skin lesion called solar lentigo it can make them stand out and be more obvious. Although the exact cause of seborrheic keratosis is still unknown, researchers believe that genetics and aging play a significant role in its development. Although exposure to sunlight over a long period of time may contribute to the formation of these growths as they can develop from flat sunspots or solar lentigos. That being said, seborrheic keratosis is not contagious and can't be spread through physical contact. While seborrheic keratosis are harmless, it's essential to get any new, any growing or scabbing or bleeding lesions checked by someone trained in skin lesion recognition and able to use a dermatoscope. This is to ensure the correct diagnosis and rule out other potentially harmful conditions such as melanoma and other types of skin cancer. Here are some other things to watch out for. Rapidly growing lesions like this one, this is a squamous cell carcinoma and that's a type of skin cancer. Other things to watch out for are lesions like these which can scab and they seem to heal but they scab over again or they can have an ulcerated area in the middle of them. These are basal cell carcinoma and that's the most common type of skin cancer. And most importantly of all, don't miss a lesion which fails the A, B, C, D, E rules. That means watching for lesions which appear to be A, asymmetrical, B, have irregular borders, C, have more than one colour, D, look different from all your other lesions, or E, are evolving or growing. As seborrheic keratosis are benign, treatment's not medically necessary. And in fact, you shouldn't expect to get your seborrheic keratosis treated in the health service these days. Treatment would be for cosmetic reasons or if they become irritated or itchy. And they can often catch on clothing and be a real nuisance. There are several methods for removing seborrheic keratosis, including cryotherapy. That, that's the main method. Um, freezing the growth causes it to peel away from the skin after a number of days. Liquid nitrogen is often used, but in my clinic, I currently use nitric oxide, which freezes the, the keratosis down to minus 89 degrees centigrade. And in this video, I'm demonstrating use of this device on some solar lentigo. 
It can cause some discomfort and even redness and blistering at the site, and it forms a scab before it heals. The seborrheic keratosis may require more than one treatment, especially if they are very large or thickened. I will also provide an information leaflet to my patients on how they can look after their skin after they have had the cryotherapy so that they can recover as quickly as possible from it. Another method is uh, shaving or scraping the keratosis off with a curette. And we do that after numbing the skin with an injection of local anesthetic. We then apply electrocautery using an, uh, an electric current so that that stops any bleeding coming through and kills the bottom part of the lesion. So in conclusion, these new moles in adulthood are probably not new moles after all. I've explained how many of them are actually seborrheic keratosis. However, there are several other benign skin lesions which I see a lot of, and these include solar lentigo, hemangioma, dermatofibroma, and sebaceous hyperplasia, and I'll be making videos on these lesions too. Please don't think that any new skin lesion that you have over the age of 30 is a seborrheic keratosis. Take a note of the warning features that I explained earlier of rapid growth or bleeding and scabbing and know your A, B, C, D, E that I described earlier. Please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so that you can see more informative videos, not only in your skin health, but also how to love the skin you're in for better health, happiness and joy. Bye for now.